Hi, I'm Guy Powell, and welcome to the next episode of the Backstory on the Shroud of Turin. If you haven't already done so, please visit GuyPowell.com and sign up for more episodes. I am the author of the upcoming book, The Only Witness, A History of the Shroud of Turin. It is a historical fiction tracing a possible yet plausible history of the Shroud over the last two millennia. Today, we'll be speaking with Emanuela Marinelli. She is a Shroud researcher with some incredible qualifications. With that, let me introduce, uh, let me introduce Manuela. She has a, really a resume that's almost too long for me to list all of the highlights, but here are a few. She's a former teacher of natural science living in Rome, Italy. She has degrees in natural and ge geological sciences and qualifications to teach mathematics, natural sciences, chemistry, and geography. Since 1977, she has been a respected Shroud author and international lecturer. She was one of the members of the Centro Romano di Sindonologia and received the Diploma of Catechist specializing in catechesis, catechesis of the Passion. In 1987, she taught the first course on Sindonology held in Rome by the Santuario della Madonna del Divino Amore, as well as many others. She has given Shroud lectures in 25 countries around the world. She has written numerous articles in newspapers and magazines and has taken part in various conferences, broadcasts, and telecasts. She's written 21 books on the Holy Shroud. Some of her books are translated into Belarusian, Czech, English, French, Polish, Portuguese, Spanish, and Ukrainian. She has participated in numerous congresses on the Shroud held around the world. And she was one of the founders of Collegiamento Pro Sindone, which is www.shroud.it. She also participated in the Jalsa Salana UK Congress of 2018 and 2019, organized by Ahmadiyya Muslims. She has received the Gold Medal of Merit of Catholic Culture and the Honor of Knight of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic. Emanuela, it's so impressive of a background. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Guy, for the invitation for this interview. Absolutely, Manuel. I'm uh, very privileged to have you on today. So, uh, well, let's get started. Uh, so what is your background and your backstory on getting interested in the Shroud of Turin? It all started in 1975, so we have to go far back in time. At that time, I was 24 years old and had recently graduated with a degree in natural sciences. I was now studying for my second degree in geology, and I was always intrigued by scientific events that could also affect faith, but I had still yet never before seen the shroud. In that year, it was the holy year, there was the jubilee, and I was walking on the Via della Conciliazione, the road that leads to St. Peter's Cathedral. In fact, I live in Rome, and I saw those, let's say, objects that are given to pilgrims as souvenirs that are not particularly beautiful, but I was struck by a beautiful face of Christ. So I entered the shop where it was displayed in the window, and I asked the nun of this religious shop, who was the artist who created this image? The nun told me, it's not made by an artist. This is the holy shroud. I didn't understand the word shroud. It was only later that I learned that the word shroud comes from sindon, the Greek word for shroud. But I didn't know that at the time. The nun then told me that the real funeral shroud that had wrapped the body of Christ existed in Turin. I remained quite skeptical. It seemed impossible to still have this ancient and precious artifact, so I never thought about it again. Two years later, in 1977, Max Frey Sulzer, who is the director of the scientific laboratory of the Zurich police, announced that he had discovered 58 different...